short and sweet. Hi there, this brief animation consists of four camera shots. Let me play this in slow motion so that you see things clearly. If you render each camera separately, it's a bit time consuming because you have to invoke four render sessions. The main problem, however, is that you cannot visualize camera cuts. In the Maya perspective window, you see only a single camera. If you want to cut from here to there or to that camera, you need to switch from one camera view to the next one, which is not exactly real time. Here the camera sequencer comes in handy. You find it under Windows and Animation Editors. Let me prepare the bot scene first. I change the units of the grid from centimeters to meters. Then, in the content browser, I select an FBX animation. That's a skeleton with lots of motion captured keyframes. And from the rigs folder, I choose the Maya bot. The FBX skeleton performs a jump, a flip. We want the bot to make that jump. So from the very right border of the Maya window, I choose the human IK tab and define the Maya bot as the character and the FBX flip as the source. This makes the bot in the scene jump to the position of the skeleton and perform the motion we wanted. Pressing the key 5 shows the proper shading of the bot. Time for the cameras. Our current camera is called Perspective. Let me create four new cameras. It's convenient to use the view menu and create a camera from that current view. The first new camera is called Perspective 1. I go to the beginning of the animation and set a keyframe by pressing the key S. Now camera number two. Let's have a closer look at the head and set a keyframe for perspective camera two. This view is useless towards the end of the animation but quite nice at the start or in the first part. Camera three straight from the side. And sweet. Keyframe. Why keyframe? Well, if you change that view, the keyframe always takes you back to where you started. For the perspective camera 4, I'll invoke a top view. Since the bot lands at the top right of that view, I set two keyframes now with a slight motion to the right and a dollying further away motion. The second keyframe is set automatically in this case because I'm in auto key mode. Otherwise, you would have to press S again. Now it's time for the camera sequencer. It contains a simple soundtrack. I middle mouse track the perspective camera one into the scene, not into the camera sequencer. The camera sequencer sees that camera now and by pressing this icon, you load it into the sequencer. It's called perspective one here and you can move the clip around if it's not starting at frame one. I select the second camera, middle mouse drag it into the scene view, load it into the camera sequencer, it lands below the first camera clip and I continue with cameras three and four. In the render settings I see all five cameras. Five because the original perspective camera is also available for rendering here. This is the window where you would typically select the cameras to be rendered, each with different time selections. The first one from frame 1 to 13, the second one from 14 to 66, etc. In a production routine you would render all cameras from beginning to end and let the director decide where to cut. By the way, you could render that in with motion blur as well. Time for fun now. In the camera sequence I select all four cl clips and cut them with a cut icon. I scrub a little bit further, cut again, cut again and cut again. And sweet. Let me delete several clips now. Playing back the animation from the timeline at the bottom shows me no camera cuts. 
but using the playback from the camera sequencer does. <laughs> you can move the clips back and forth, create more cuts now. That's what the camera sequencer is made for. But how do we render the animation with all our cuts? Well, by creating an Uber camera. In German you would call it Überkamera. Uber camera sort of packs all four cameras into one with all the cuts. You find the Uber camera in the outliner and in the render settings after you created it. Of course, we delete all other cameras in the render settings and just render the Uber camera from beginning to the end of the animation. Short. Well, by the way, with motion blur rendering, you won't be happy here. The problem is, the cut from one camera to the next should be ignored by the motion blur, but it isn't. Because it's basically a post effect and it sees that cut and thinks, oh, drastic motion blur. No, it isn't. Well, thanks for watching and have a good day.